Yo, what's up? Pascal here. Nice to see you again on my channel. And today I will show you how I create time and hyperlapses out of raw photos. So, I recently published a tutorial on how I create day to night hyperlapses with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro and this tutorial is basically an extension of that, like my process, how I use all the photos that I shot there and edit them later, but we will actually use another time lapse right now and it doesn't really matter if you use a drone or a camera, like your mirrorless camera or a GoPro or whatever, that same process really works with every camera. And the reason why I shoot raw photos is simply that with raw photos I get the most dynamic range out of the sensor and if I have some issues or something, if I need to correct a bit more, then I can also do that in post-production simply because raw photos allow me a lot more color grading or color correction than normal photos would do and especially also normal video and that's actually a reason also why with more professional high-end cameras you usually shoot raw video simply because you can do a lot more with the footage so when we shoot time lapses or hyperlapses we have the ability to shoot raw photos and we should definitely do that so the time lapse that we will create today is that one that you see right now You see it's a nice one from Anchor Watt of the Sunrise, I really like it. There's a little bit of a ring around the sun, I couldn't really prevent it, it's already raw, but it still looks great and yeah, now I show you how I did it. Okay, so these are my raw photo files as you can see. It's loading right now and yeah, it starts totally black here, it's not a good example. And But you can see here, like here are all the previews at the bottom already. And they are look quite black here and I want to get a, a photo somewhere around the middle where the sun is already up. I don't want to get a photo of the beginning or the ending because I want to grade somewhere in between. I mean it's, it's normal that my beginning on a sunrise is a bit darker and it's also normal that my ending will be a little bit brighter. So I want to choose a picture out of the middle at first. Then I do a right click on it and I go to open with and I open it in Lumina 3. That's an app. I prefer that over Lightroom simply for two reasons. The first reason is of course the price because Lightroom you have to buy it in a subscription and I don't want to pay a subscription every month. So Lumina you just have a one time payment of I think $59 or so on. So that's quite cheap. and. Also it has some nice functionalities like right now we're into Lumina 3 here and you can see that there's for example this Accent AI filter. When I boost that up it already does a great job by lifting my shadows for me and it also has this AI sky enhancer that should enhance the sky a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily do that on that picture because the details are already there. But for example if you have some drone shots then it can really make your process a bit faster. And I mean AI is not always good because it takes away the control from you and does it automatically. And it also has another functionality, I will not show that right now because that's for drone shots and that is that those um, filters here, those tools, that you can have like multiple predefined filters and it has a predefined filter set for drone shots so that's also pretty cool. It also comes with a sky enhancer and some other tools that count more for drones. So that's definitely good uh, it's actually here when you go to aerial photography then you can see it here like there are all the filters already in there that you need if you have drone shots and that alone is pretty cool but now i go into the professional workspace i have raw develop here and that's important for me because the first the first thing that i want to do is to lift my shadows and you can see here is the histogram and that's important for me because I don't want to do a final grade here. What I just want to do is to bring out all the details in the shot to basically um, take the contrast away from the image so that 
I have all the details from the shadows and I have as much detail as possible from the highlights so that I can save that into JPEG files and make a video out of that. So let's lift the shadows a little bit more. Maybe, yeah, let's switch this to 30. Lower the contrast a little bit here. Also maybe minus 30 in that image. Yeah, that makes it usable. Then we also have the highlights. Maybe I can bring the highlights a bit more down. Doesn't do that much with the sun. I would say I don't do that much here. Maybe 25 just. And as you can see now in the image by lifting the shadows and lowering the contrast, all the details are in there. And when I turn that off, now develop, you see it's all black. So if I would export it with all those black shadows, then there wouldn't be any detail and that wouldn't look good. So yeah, after that, you can save the Lumina look. Of course, you can do a bit more. You could, for example, introduce more saturation and so on if you want to, but I don't do that right now because I only want to have a base correction here so that I get rid of the contrast and I can export this so that it's a, it's a bit like lock. It's, it doesn't really look like lock footage right now, but it works a bit like lock, just having a flat picture so that I can do my color grading later. Save Lumina look. Now let's go to Anchor What AV TL save and then you can go to file batch processing and then you can like mark all the files in your folder all the raw files mark them all drag them inside here then it automatically reads all those files continue and then here under Lumina look you can choose user Lumina looks and then you go to AV, AW, TL, amount 100 and then format JPEG also quality 100 sRGB. Depending on the software that you use later the app to convert it to a video file you might also be able to use for example TIFF images to get an even better uh, quality because TIFF images can have a higher bit rate like JPEG right now is 8 bit that's not perfect uh, TIFF image would be a bit better there after that you simply click on process and then it renders all the photos for you and you get like you can of course set the exporting folder and so on so I exported it to the folder JPEG here right now and now I have all my JPEGs here I can show you that one so that's how it looks right now after that I go into an app called TLDF, it's, time la it's called Timelapse Deflicker and what it does is when I insert all those JPEG images here, I will not insert all images right now, that takes a bit too long to process. Oh, there are also some RAWs in there, that's not good. Um, messed up this folder here already. <laughs> so drag those images inside like all your JPEGs in that case and that in my case right now I use a bit less so that it goes a bit quicker here and then you see that it generates thumbnails but it also analyzes the pictures so that it can basically deflicker those pictures so what for example when you shoot with aperture priority mode on the sunrise then it may be that you have some flickers in your image and that pro uh, program can actually solve that for example here we have those blending options, here it blends a bit over the frame so it looks all a bit smoother, then you can also apply noise reduction, you have the deflicker here, so you can even set a reference area right now, but in that case, in that image here I don't have any flicker or so on, use a big, bit of blending, maybe four frames and then you can simply preview it at first to see how it would look later. We see already that looks around good and I mean you have some more options like you can click on edit image and so on here but like mentioned before I want to do that later in my final grading and final cut so after that you simply click on render and then it renders a video file out of that so if I click on render right now I can choose the file name and I don't want to output images I only want to output video and there you can go to H264 but I would recommend to go to ProRes 42 HQ or 42 to get the best quality because ProRes is not just better to edit 
but it's also a better quality and yeah you get a lot more information in your shot than as using MPEG-4. Color amount I recommend Rec 7 or 9 because that's the video color space you usually want to have that and then you can also like choose the size and the images are actually in a 4 to 3 format and they are actually I think 5 or 6k or something like that uh, instead of 4k and I want to have the highest resolution possible here simply because you have more information to work with like you can make some like pans up and down and so on like that looks pretty cool and the time uh, the frame rate you should also set that to your final project depending on what you want to have In my case I cut my projects on 24p so 23.976 and yeah after that I just click start and then it creates the video file and then you get something like that. Now you see that this video looks a little bit shaky because I had it on my gimbal instead of a tripod seems like it readjusted a little bit and that's why I need to stabilize that in post which show you now. So to do that you can simply drag the file inside Final Cut. I usually cut the end uh, at the beginning and the end off and then you can click on stabilization and you wait a little bit until it stabilizes the footage so and now the stabilization is done so you can see it looks a lot better but it still has the 4 to 3 format and that's why i need to scale in a bit uh, so around that i think 134 maybe 33, yeah, 134 is usually good value. Just try it out for your individual individual shot. And now you can see we have this nice time lapse here. It looks awesome, it's perfectly stable. And um, what you can also do, you can actually play around with that a little bit. Like for example, you can make it even faster, like 200% speed. Yeah, that's great. Then for example, you could also animate it. Because we had a 4 to 3 image before, we have more height than our widescreen image actually had. So by like changing the position in the beginning and setting a keyframe and then setting a higher position at the end and setting a keyframe, I can actually animate it. I don't want to get too high here, that would look weird, but now you can see like now it's also like going up and that's actually the reason why having this 4 to 3 and a bigger resolution as you're actually cutting in is so good because you can make those effects in post. So that's it already. You see it's a pretty simple process and I actually mentioned another app for converting the JPEGs to video when I recorded the day to night hyperlapse tutorial for the Mavic 2 Pro. That was the app Sequence. This is not a bad app. I used it before like for a year or so. Um, but I figured out that especially if the light changes a lot then it calculates the flicker a bit wrong in those shots. That's why I don't use it anymore and I've uh, switched to time-lapse deflicker TLDF. So I recommend to use that app. But you can try both depending on the type of time or hyperlapse that you choose. It might also be that sequence is a bit easier uh, to use for you. But apart from that you see it's a pretty simple process. As first you bring the RAWs into a format where you can color grade it by just compressing the histogram a little bit, taking out the contrast. Then you export it to JPEG files or to TIFF depending on what app you use. And then you make a video file out of that while removing also the flicker. In that case I didn't have any flicker there, like not that obvious flicker at least. And yeah, that's why it was a bit easier to do. But yeah, that's a basic process. If you have a little bit more shake in your footage, especially with, with hyperlapses, that happens a lot, then I also recommend to use DaVinci Resolve to get rid of that. The Final Cut is not capable of doing, any, doing that anymore because there you can simply like mark an object and then it tracks all the movement in your shot to that object and that helps a lot with stabilizing that footage. So DaVinci Resolve, it's free, it's very nice to do that. But it's a bit more professional, it's a bit more advanced, I would say, and that's why I don't put it in that video anymore. But maybe if you want to see a tutorial on that here on that channel, then just leave it in the comments below and 
I will create one. So I hope you liked that video and you shoot a bit better time and hyperlapses in the future. Like mentioned before, always shoot in RAW, then it will be great. And there will be more tutorials. I'm on a 30 day challenge right now, so I publish one video per day with tutorial stuff. So don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification button right now and see you tomorrow.